Hello again, everybody. I wish that were the smallest problem in the New York City subway system, trying to put the coins in there. Uh, last week, uh, as we began our expanded show at 12.30 Eastern Time, we were mentioning some of the affiliates that have joined us now because we are on at an earlier hour. And I neglected to mention one of our most important affiliates, KTVL in Medford, Oregon. Uh, we did not mention them in the greetings last night or last week to the rest of the stations, and I'm, I'm told that Marvin Rhodes, their program director, was highly upset and threatened to cancel Laverne and Shirley, which is not even on this network. But uh, <laughs> welcome to uh, KTVL in Medford, Oregon, the new, one of the newest members of our Tomorrow Show family. Incidentally, since we came on the air at 12.30 last week, the uh, mail has been pouring in here to our office. Today, two or three letters poured in, and the, uh, the uh, nationwide audience is unanimous in their appreciation of this show. Uh, Dear Tom, I can't stand your new program. That's from uh, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, also from Chicago, we're not doing very well out there. This has been a very bad night for me. I just watched your new show. And uh, finally, uh, going out to Texas, uh, get back to the old format and do it fast. So thank you for all those cards and letters. They're <laughs> extremely, extremely encouraging. <laughs> a couple of years ago, David Letterman first appeared on this show. He was a member of a panel. Uh, we had some young, rising comedians who lived in Hollywood at the time, and we asked them to our studios, and they talked about the difficulties of breaking into the business. Uh, as it turns out, David Letterman is now starring on his own show on NBC television here every morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, he has often been called Johnny Carson's heir apparent. He's had some ups and some downs with the new show at 10 o'clock in the morning. He is still, however, one of the brightest comedy stars and talk show stars in this business, and we're very happy to have David here tonight. Now, when we had him here the last time, we did not have a studio audience. Uh, as a consequence, nobody laughed when David said something extremely funny. We have found over the years that if we have comedians here, it's important that they get some kind of feedback from the studio audience so that they can, can continue with their timing. You know, what's the most important thing in comedy? Timing. This studio is equipped, and I think we have the only one in the business right now, with a laugh sign. I, I don't think you can see it because yeah. it's uh, over the head here. Can you grab a shot of the laugh sign? We'll have it up for you in a second. I have in my hand the switch down here, which controls the laugh sign. All right, now watch this, watch this. Okay, there it goes. See? All right. A little higher. There you see it. Laugh, all right? When Letterman comes out here, no matter what he says, I mean, good evening, it's nice. You want to rehearse it now? All right. I'll, I'll be Letterman. Well, Tom, it's nice to be with you. <laughs> they got it, okay? <laughs> so be ready for that. Make him crazy, huh? Yeah, he'll want it on his show all the time. David Letterman is here tonight. We also have some uh, clips from the David Letterman show. A little bit later on from Salem, Massachusetts, we will all have a chance to meet via two-way link, Killer Kowalski. He is from the Killer Kowalski... <laughs> I guess you know we're going to have lady wrestlers too, huh? Uh, from the Killer Kowalski Institute for Pro Wrestlers at the YMCA in Salem, Mass. We'll meet the killer himself, and we'll have two of the killer's prize students, Vicious Venetia and Lori Nephew, who will demonstrate some of the killer's techniques. Watch that stuff there, ladies. And then to close our show tonight, about 45 minutes from now, we have four child stars from the 50s and the 60s who are being reunited for the first time in 20 years. I don't think necessarily... Well, yeah, here, because the, the show that they're in will be on the air tomorrow night. They will appear together on an NBC movie of the week, which is called Scout's Honor. That'll be on at 8 o'clock Eastern Time tomorrow night. We have Angela Cartwright from Make Room for Daddy and Lost in Space, Jay North, who starred in Dennis the Menace, Paul Peterson, who was a former Mouseketeer and later appeared as the teenage heartthrob in the Donna Reed Show, and Lauren Chapin from Father Knows Best. Angela, Jay, Paul, and Lauren have all experienced the celebrity status of being childhood celebrities, the trauma of unemployment when their shows were canceled. Each has handled it differently, and they're here tonight to talk about how their lives have changed since then, how television has changed, their lives have changed, their careers have changed, etc., etc., etc. And do we have pictures of them when they were... Uh, Kids, little kids, later on. It's all later on. I hope we have time for those pictures. Now, last week here, we tried something which didn't work, and we're going to try it again tonight, in which right. members of the audience attempt to ask old Tom a couple of questions to see if he has anything of importance to say. So who would like to be first in our audience tonight? Yes, ma'am, right there. Be fine. What is your name, ma'am? My name is Lisa Corman. Fine, Lisa. Um, I was wondering, when you interview somebody who doesn't share your specific view on a subject, do you ever find any problem interviewing them objectively? 
what's objective? That's like what's fair. I have trouble, as you probably know, hiding my feelings. If I don't like somebody, it probably creeps through here, even though I don't mean for it to. Recent example, Johnny Rotten uh, uh, from uh, the uh, Sex Pistols. I did not like this man when I met him, and it became very, very apparent. Uh, some years ago, David Duke from the Ku Klux Klan. I disagreed with him, and that came through. But it really doesn't get in the way. I think, uh, I think when you do something like this, if you try and mask your feelings behind objectivity, you don't do a very good program. It gets bland, and I don't like to do things that are bland. Okay? Thank you. Who wants to be next up there now? Here. Yes, sir. Your name? Yes, Eddie Jacobs from Long Beach. I'd like to know if uh, you miss your old format of your show uh, when you didn't have an audience, and I thought it was much more intimate. I miss it, but uh, don't ask me what I'm doing here. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you doing here? <laughs> Uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, doing it for seven years with nobody in the studio and now doing this, I, I, I will tell you, it's uncomfortable here. It's not pleasant sometimes because I have the feeling that audiences come to television shows for two things, to win a washing machine or to laugh uproariously. And we don't have that going on all the time here. And sometimes when it's very quiet here and very quiet out there, uh, <laughs> it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But I will get used to it as best I can, and I hope the people who are watching at home get used to it. However, if we get many more telegrams like I read tonight, we're going to have to have a meeting. But thank you for asking the question. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Yes, I'd like to know how you ever got to be the host of a nationally telecast talk show. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think I should not be? And, and if you don't think so, say it in front of all these people. Be brave. No, I'm, I'm not saying you don't do a good job. I'd just like to know how you got there. Uh, outlasting a lot of other people. True. Just outlasting many, many people who are out in the hallway now saying, why is he in there and we're out here? <laughs> and being lucky and being in the right place at the right time. It's really the reason. Time for one more if anybody else wants to. Yes, ma'am. My name is Molly Francis from Hi, New York Molly. City. How would you like to trade places, uh, time slots with David Letterman? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see how it goes here for the next 25 or 30 minutes, and I'll let you know. I don't think so. I'm comfortable here, and uh, David, I think, is better in the morning. We'll ask him about that when he comes out, all right? Thank you all for being here tonight, and thank you all for being with us at home, and we'll meet David Letterman right after these words from our sponsors and the NBC television show. have a bone in my throat. <gasps> Warming up the audience as he does every morning from uh, 10 to 11 o'clock here on NBC. Here's my first guest of the evening. Would you welcome Mr. David Letterman. David? <laughs> Did you happen to watch the uh, presidential debates at all last night? I'm actually too upset to talk about that, Tom. It <laughs> It looks, it looks now like my best friend is dying, so it's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> what have you got here? Let me... No, you know what that is. Uh, no, did you see the debates at all? And I saw you... ten minutes of the debate, Tom. <laughs> I tell you, do this at ten o'clock in the morning, there'd be no... So, yeah, this is, well, this is mostly my staff, as it turns out, in that loyal, loyal group that they are. I know, I see all those help wanted signs in the seat out there. <laughs> Let's get this out of the way rapidly, without, without any darts being blown now. There was a story here in the New York Times on, uh, I think it was last Friday, that the future of your show was in some jeopardy. Could you clarify that? Have you had any meetings with the people here at NBC or any conversations with your people that would shed further light on this? Um, I called the Times principally about my subscription. <laughs> and in addition to other things. Uh, there were no meetings per se, phone calls, uh, but uh, as of today now, I, I was uh, informed that the show has not been canceled. So, Fantastic. And, and that's thank you. <laughs> probably means it's been picked up again. I didn't say that, nor, <laughs> nor, nor did the, uh, the person I talked to say that. But they said it had not been canceled at this point. Remember when you were first going on the air and you had the, uh, the move to New York from your home in Los Angeles and the pressures of a day-in, day-out show five days a week? 
How is it different from what you thought it was going to be when you moved in here? Well, the, the, uh, the city uh, alone is a major adjustment. I had moved from a place in Los Angeles, which is about the nicest place uh, you can live, uh, real neat, near the water, mm -hmm. uh, horses going by the streets, people on them. I don't mean to give the impression <laughs> that horses running wild out there, but um, uh, here it's a little different. We used to go down and watch uh, the whales, the California gray or blue. It's hard to tell from that distance. Colorblind, yeah. yeah. Uh, they would migrate near my home, and then you move to New York, and of course you have it's the psychotics migrating. <laughs> so that's um, that was a major adjustment, and um, the noise was a problem. When I first moved to New York City, I was living at 55th and uh, 6th Avenue. Now. For those of you watching uh, Medford, Oregon, for example, uh, it's the busiest, loudest, nastiest intersection in the world. It's, it's where the Army does their tank testing, um, <laughs> and General Motors works on the new diesel equipment there. Uh, so that was unpleasant. Every day would start with a fist fight and end with a fist fight. So that was, that was tough. Um, and it took me about three months to get used to just living here. And putting on the show was, uh, has been uh, better and worse than I thought it was going to be. When everything goes great, it's about the best feeling. Isn't it fantastic, it's though, when it yeah. really clicks? And oh, you've you... had it, too. Yes, I have. Okay. Um, <laughs> Not tonight, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, but then when it comes apart, um, there's nothing you can do. It just, it just goes lower than you ever thought it was going to go. Don't you find, though, that even if you do a dud, on Tuesday, you know you're going to come back in there on Wednesday and you can kind of forget about what went on on exactly. Tuesday. Exactly. That's, that's the beauty of doing a daily show and, and I like doing a live show. Uh, I, I just don't have the patience to rehearse the barroom sketch all week uh, and then do it and tape it and that's it. Uh, mm -hmm. I like to go in, rehearse it once and do it as hard as you can and then go on to something else and forget about it. And the beauty of knowing you're coming back the next day <laughs> uh, <laughs> is, uh, is great. It's wonderful. I kid you about that, but both of us know the feeling. When I was doing sure. the late night or the, uh, uh, the primetime show last year, there were stories in the paper for the last two months that, you know, that guy's out of there. And it's hard to read that in the paper and come in here and put a smile on your face for all the people that you work with. And I really didn't have any great way of handling it except to lock myself in the office and not talk to anybody for a while. W what do you do with all the chatter? You know? uh, it's, it's real difficult. Uh, there's one rule I, I keep trying to abide by and unfortunately i only get to it about 12 percent of the time and that is it's only television uh we're not trying to help this country get to neptune uh <laughs> we're not doing cancer research it's only television uh and there's nothing sacred about television i mean uh if the 40 year odd history of commercial broadcasting has taught us one thing it should be that there's nothing sacred uh being transmitted uh, across this great land of ours but it's tough to, uh, you, every th all of your intentions, uh, all of your attentions, and every waking minute is turned inward. And it's like circling the wagons. Uh, the place is crawling with Indians. And it, so it's tough to keep it in perspective. Ain't it, though? Yeah. Now, to happier moments on your show, you had a fire there one time. You got, you, you, you. <laughs> oh, right. incidentally, I forgot to tell you. In honor of the Christmas show, which you did a couple weeks ago. Oh, we, we that's have, a nice Mer touch. Merry that's Christmas great. to you. Thank today. you very much. It's very nice. Very nice. We had a fire. We, uh, we packed the studio. Well, down let me finish up the kerosene and let, 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 me, let me finish on the Christmas tree first. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought yeah. for, I thought no, you did your Christmas show, what, about a week and a half, two weeks ago? We did it September 8th or 9th in that vicinity, yeah. Guess there wasn't much there anyways. I mean, in, in, that, in going pursuing that, so why don't we go to the fire? Oh, no, I thought you had something to say. No, absolutely not. How many not. of you thought Tom had an anecdote? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of thought he did myself. Um, I'll tell you about the, uh, the Christmas show. We, you, you know, you get, uh, you get into October, and uh, it gets thick and ugly with Christmas specials. Everybody, John Chancellor... Give me December. No, October. The Christmas specials start, they start promoing the uh, Christmas specials. John Chancellor does one. Um, the Brady Bunch does one. That's him. People who, who did pilots, they all get together for a big special. Pilots that never aired, they have a Christmas special. And uh, we thought that to protect the integrity of the Christmas special, we'd do ours early, make it special, and get it out of the way. And that's what we did. And, and a fine time was had by all. Willard Scott was there as Santa. Uh, Miss America. Uh, sang White Christmas. Susan sang, Paul. Sang yeah. White Christmas. By the way, one of the highlights of this year was when 
the ten finalists, the Miss America pageant, and uh, Ron Ely sang, uh, Won't You Take Me to Funky Town. Uh, <laughs> I, I digress. Uh, <laughs> um, so we, that was our Christmas show, and it was great. It was done, I mean, uh, we had everything. We had the snow. The opening was shot right through the wreath. You mm -hmm. know, it was very nice. It was yeah. like a Courier and Ives at Christmas. I saw it. It was exactly as you described it. Yeah. I thought probably one of the reasons you did it was because you'd be off Christmas anyway, probably at home. I mean, just no, off for the day. Now, that's all. Only off for the day. Come on. What is a super sensitivity here? You're not going <laughs> to... I'm so big. <laughs> Why you? Like, Why you ought to... <laughs> it probably would be, you know... No, you're right. That was the other reason. We the staff, the staff wanted uh, wanted Christmas off, Tom. So we did the show early. Good idea, David. Not a bad idea, Tom. <laughs> Wish I'd have had it. I want to show the fire, and uh, then you did another little thing that yeah, we want to demonstrate yeah. here—the dressing room routine. But I have these commercials with. We will continue with Mr. David Letterman right after these announcements. Back with David Letterman, uh, the uh, the fire situation. Since yeah. we have that clip of tape, yeah, what was yeah. that? Uh, it <laughs> it turned out great. And it looks like it was all planned, but it was not planned, and it was, uh, for a minute or two, potentially very dangerous. Uh, the premise of the whole thing was we had invited a couple, Sam and Betty Kottenoff from New Jersey, to celebrate their 30th wedding anniversary on our show. And we had a guy come in and decorate it. We had an ice sculpture. We had their closest friends. We had a huge blow-up the size of, of that rear screen of Sam and Betty on their wedding day. Yeah. And Sam and Betty could not have been better. They were, they were great. They were solid American folks and, and nice, good sense of humor. And uh, so the show started, and about a minute into the show, it was like somebody had thrown a hand grenade into a hen house. It was up for grabs. We, it had just kind of gotten away from us. Uh, and we spent the rest of the day chasing the show. So the guy who catered this affair said, it's not a party unless you do something special. So fine, you know, you take this guy's word for it, he does parties. And uh, <laughs> so he says, uh, what we're going to do at the end, we'll drop these uh, uh, pink flower petals. What a great idea. And fine. <laughs> Give me some of those, right? And we'll, and we'll wave sparklers. Now, these are the new laser sparklers. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're made from titanium, and they burn white hot, and uh, the government doesn't know we have them. So... <laughs> And then the flower petals had been treated with the most volatile explosive known to man. It was like naphtha, you know? So um, everything was great, and, and we were all grateful that the show had come to an end, and, and I was pretending to smile, and I was wrapping up the show, and that's when, as we say, the Hindenburg got closer to the earth. All right, here it comes right now. I want to invite you folks to be with us tomorrow. We'll have a gentleman who is an authority on male menopause. Uh, our musical guest is going to be Stephen Stills. And uh, Will Schreiner will be here with the videotape. Plus, as an added attraction on this very show, on this very stage, I'm going to learn how to milk a cow. That's Oh, my goodness. We've got, we've got a fire. Well, I've heard about oh. <laughs> You do take some chances there, not only with that kind of craziness there, but now I read that you want, you're running a contest to where you want to take the show to somebody's house and do it from there? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're having, after that, however, people are not <laughs> eager to have us there. Uh, yeah, we want to, it's, it's been one of my oh. dreams from, from uh, the very inception of this. Uh, see, I've spent all my life watching TV and thinking that I'd like to do this, I don't want to do that, I'd like to do it this way, here's what I'd like to try. And one of the ideas I always wanted to do, just move that sucker in <laughs> to like Sam and Betty's house. Okay. Sam and Betty would be the perfect couple. I want Ed Newman does the news on our show. I want Ed sitting there on their sofa reading the morning news. <laughs> if, if, they, if they have a piano, I want Frank Owens, our orchestra leader, they're playing their piano. I want their guests to be our guests on the show. I want to take a tour of the house. 
uh, go through the city and find out and just do a real network one hour uh, show from somebody's house. So that's what, that's what we're doing now. May I caution you, back in Los Angeles some years ago, they have eyewitness news there on Channel 7. So one, day, one year they announced that uh, they would have a contest and they would take eyewitness news to somebody's house. <laughs> and they, they got Joe Betty in the living room doing the news, okay? They got Stu Nahan in the bathroom, so help me God, doing the sports, all right? They got, they, got, they got the weather guy out in the kitchen sitting there at the table doing the weather and that sort of thing. And after it was all over, when television comes into pe people's homes, the crews, they don't realize what we do there. We come in with cables and cameras and microphones, and we dirty up rugs and break hedges outside and knock down... I don't want to blow your contest here, but... <laughs> there was a lawsuit after it was over, so check the budget before you go out there. You know. Careful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, what about the dressing room tour you did one day? We do it. we... Uh, stuck it to old We don't have a major budget. Um, uh, we, we don't have uh, stars. People are not eager to get up at dawn and come in and be on the show. So we make do with what we have. We have been all over this facility, this beautiful building. We've been to the commissary. We've been uh, to the roof. We've been to the uh, uh, garden, roof garden area. We've been down in the plaza. We've been Sixth Avenue. And on this particular day, we were showing the people a glimpse behind the scenes at the uh, various dressing rooms. And we looked at your dressing room. Um, <laughs> we looked at a typical NBC dressing room, and, and we also looked at my dressing room. All right, let's, let's go to the videotape then from a recent David Letterman show. Here is a tour of dressing rooms on the sixth floor. This is dynamite. And believe me, the fact that we were able to set this up is no small miracle. Tom Snyder's dressing room. Let's just see if Mr. Snyder is in. Uh, come on in, if you will. Why, it's almost like a shrine in here. It's, it's breathtaking, ladies and gentlemen. Paul, oh, how you? Know, I'm so, excuse me. What, what is your name, sir? Uh, my name is Brian. Brian, how are you? And, and you work for Mr. Snyder? Yes, I do. What, and what do you do? I uh, prepare cocktails. Prepare for cocktails for Mr. Snyder. Come on in, let's have a cake Oh, I really shouldn't, but what the heck. Here, uh, let's take a look at some of these lovely artifacts. Uh, a complete bar here for Mr. Snyder. And this, this is a uh, gold, uh, a solid gold platter. And I don't know if you can read that, but it commemorates the first talk show, uh, 14th century, I believe. Very nice article. Over here, a couple of Tom's biggest fans. <laughs> Just a joke there. And we have the candelabra and the little field. Oh, very nice touch. Is uh, Boy, thank you very much, Brian. I certainly appreciate that. Now, if you want to come on in here, we'll get a better look at the expanse of the dressing room itself. And and uh, as you can see, there's always an entourage here in Mr. Snyder's room. And uh, uh, how do you do? Are you uh, uh, you work for Mr. Snyder? Yes, I do. Oh, great! And you sing lovely too. Nice to have you here. And of course, uh, the entourage. And could we actually see the? Uh, excuse me, sir, if you don't mind. These are all network executives, ladies and gentlemen, hard at work. There, of course, is a picture of Mr. Snyder. Uh, Brian, is it possible to get a word with Tom? Is he in? Oh, yes, he is. But he's in his hot tub right now. Tom's in his hot tub. Well, darn. Listen, we've got to run. Thank you. And yes, nice to see you, Mr. Silverman. Okay, we've got to run. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Drive safely. That's Tom Snyder's dressing room. Pretty impressive, isn't it? <laughs> I just got out of the sauna just seconds ago. Yeah, I'm Fantastic. sorry. I'm sorry we missed you. All right, I've got to do a little break here. Will you stay with us a couple I'd minutes? I'd be happy to. Okay, Mr. David Letterman will continue uh, right after these announcements, so stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Now, that little vignette of my dressing room, while it was interesting and funny, it wasn't quite accurate. Not accurate? No. Would you mind if I, if I took you to it? Would you folks excuse us for a few seconds? Would you mind if we I'd went? All right, would you unclip I'd that? I'd love and we'll to go to the dressing room. Dress room. We'll be right back. Now, you stay here, okay? Come on, David. Why do they applaud when we leave? Come right this way. See, now, your tour, while it was good, was not quite accurate. Not quite accurate, okay? Now, you have a fabulous hallway on the sixth floor. I want to show you the, the, uh, the ladies and gentlemen, how are you? The third floor hallway. We have a... <laughs> now, you believe this? Frankie, take a look right over here. Oh, 
boy. I'd like you to meet Mr. Mark Lyons, who's Mark our Lyons lounge act. People who get tired of our show inside, they come out here and they get a little entertainment. This is Cost great. Absolutely. Great. This nice? This All right. Like, this is like a Muncie cat house. <laughs> this is just wonderful. All right. Now, because a lot of shows travel in through here, we have this facility being cleaned at all times. <laughs> How many of you have one of these at all? <laughs> Boy, they can't hear you. That's all right. It wasn't worth it. <laughs> Hallways being cleaned at all times. Excuse us, sir. You know Dr. Frank Field? <laughs> yeah. Hi, how, how are you, there? David Letterman, Dr. Field. How are you? I can't tell you how much I enjoy your disease show every morning at 6.30. It goes nice with my favorite well, breakfast my food. full-time job. <laughs> now, this is what I regularly do. Very nice, Frank. You're doing a wonderful job. Weather has been a little slow for the doctor. Frank, Frank. In there, it's a little dirty in there, okay? If you don't mind, thank you. Right this way, David. This is the star hallway here, all right? Isn't this exciting? Some of the props on the many interesting NBC shows. Now, come right in, please. Come right in. Let me get this, uh, let me get this stuff out of your way here. What, what Tom, now, uh, what happened to the little Filipino kids you used to have in here? <laughs> no, no, they've gone back to oh, Camp Downloaded. There was some sort of problem with immigration, I remember that. Yeah, you know Alfredo, the wardrobe master here at the... Uh, nice to see you. Yeah. Mr. Letterman? That's right. Did you ever find my wallet? No. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Just let it go. <laughs> Here's the sauna right behind you here. We don't want to cover this up, all that's right. right? You notice we have two kinds of water here, cold and cold. In oh, case you... that's great. And this is, this is Tom's actual wardrobe. This is from the Sears under $5 collection. <laughs> Not for the big and hefty. That's great, Tom. So that's about it. This is wonderful. Isn't this terrific? Really amazing. These are nice. A little paperweight, huh? Yeah. You're right. Check yourself out there and make sure everything's all right. Okay, fine. As good as it ever gets. That's about it. Uh, and here you go, kids. Look at Tom. Apparently, smokes them way down. <laughs> Thanks very much, Alfredo. All right. Don't nice forget. Press you. the shirts there now. Okay, they cheap. Need, uh, they need paper in the men's room. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right back where we came from. This is more fun than humans ought to be allowed to have, you know. <laughs> Well, I know, station, but we're going to go back in the studio. You don't want to stay in the dressing room the rest of your life. See, this is exciting. This is what television ought to be. You just you go, look at this guy. Hi, right, nice to see you again, Hi. John. How are Hi, you? Hello, John. How are you? John Sullivan, the Hi, former Tom. audio man of the Tomorrow Show. Yes. How are you, John? Nice to meet you, Tom. Nice How are you? you John. Congratulations no, on your new show. Thank you very much, John. Good. Good to see you. Lights are going out here. But feel free, David, to come down here, use this facility whenever you'd like. It's yours. Uh, I want you to feel comfortable with it. You know, use whatever you want. Well, I appreciate that. It's my pleasure. Fellas, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So that's the real Tom Snyder dressing room. You know, the one that... The, isn't that fantastic? <laughs> they can. That's the problem. David, thank you for being with us tonight. Thank and, you very much for having me. I appreciate it. And in spite of all this nonsense that goes around in the background, stay with it. Don't give up. And stay with us here in New York. We like to have you. I like being here. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. David Lutton. We'll continue after this for the NBC television station.